Hi, and welcome to Cortex Presents Automated Transcription for Handwritten and Manuscript Materials. We're thrilled to be here presenting for the Society of American Archivist Annual Meeting 2021. We hope to see you all in person next year. My name is Jessica Kowalski. I'm a sales manager for Cortex, and today I'm joined by my colleague, Katie Gambone, Senior Sales Manager for Cortex. First, we wanna start with what we're going to cover today. We'll begin with who's Adam Matthew Digital and what is Cortex? Why are we all here today? <laughs> and then we'll go on to the uh, Cortex being a command center for transcription services, including OCR, EV transcription, and handwritten text recognition with transcription. We'll also show you some of our partner sites and how they're using these transcription services on their own digital collection sites built in Cortex. We'll also provide you some opportunities to continue learning about Cortex, as well as how to get in touch with us. And we do want to let you know we're here live to answer any questions you may have, so feel free to put them in the chat, and we'll be responding throughout our time here. So who is Adam Matthew Digital? Adam Matthew Digital is a publisher of award-winning digital products that provide access to collections from leading archives and libraries around the world. We enhance our content through the innovative use of technology inspired by the unique nature of the materials with which we work. That technology is called Cortex, and we'll talk more about Cortex in just a moment. But first, I thought it might be fun to share some facts about Adam Matthew Digital. We've been, we've been licensing archival content now for just over 30 years, and we've published 100, over 120 of our collections digitally. We have sourced uh, materials from over 200 partners in over 15 countries and have over 1,100 customers in 44 countries. So we have a global presence, not only in who is, uh, you know, we're sourcing our, our material from, but also who is accessing and engaging with our materials. In our digital collections, we have over 20 million pages and over 4,000 hours of EV content. And we're adding to that each and every year with new frontless content. Our collections also span uh, from the 15th to the 21st centuries, so we have a, a wide breadth and depth of material and subject types. So Cortex is the platform created by Adam Matthew Digital. I mentioned that we've been publishing uh, digital collections now for quite some time. Our digital collections have always been published on a platform built in-house. So Cortex is just the first time in which we're releasing our technology for use by individual repositories. Cortex is a fully hosted cloud-based solution, and there's no coding experience necessary to ingest your materials and to publish a digital collection site. So essentially anywhere uh, with an anyone with an internet connection can build and publish a digital collection. Cortex also features a variety of transcription services that we'll delve into in today's presentation. OCR, EV transcription, and handwritten text recognition with transcription, as well as flexible metadata and the ability to build digital exhibits and platform, allowing you to build multiple accessibility and discovery points into your collections. Cortex launched in 2018, and since that time, we've experienced a growing community of partners, many of which are based in the US, as well as Canada, uh, the UK, and Australia, if you visit cortexcollections.com, you'll find all of our partners listed and those with a published digital collection site uh, are you can discover and explore those as well. So what we're here to speak about today is transcription services in Cortex. I mentioned OCR. Many of you are likely already familiar with OCR, but we'll just review. Uh, OCR can be applied to print materials. So think newspapers, pamphlets, and books. Uh, and by applying OCR, you'll produce a full text transcript, which you can search for for particular keywords. We also have EV transcription, which provides a timestamp transcript as well as closed captioning that can be applied to items such as oral histories, records, tapes, and video clips, and more. And then, uh, excitingly, we just released handwritten text recognition with transcription this spring, uh, allowing you to create a transcript in the same manner as OCR, for example, for handwritten materials for the first time for your own digital collections. And so with that, 
Oh, whoops. With that, I am going to jump into, um, you know, I mentioned our partners. I wanted to jump into one of our partners sites, uh, Harris County Public Library. So Harris County Public Library published their uh, digital collection site in celebration of 100 years of their library system. Now we can see there's a few ways to enter and, and engage with their materials. Uh, we have a search bar uh, here at the top. They've also produced a search bar here uh, in the center. Um, in Cortex, we use building blocks to build digital collections pages. So we can see that they've uh, built uh, with thumbnails underneath, with more thumbnails and then filters into search categories. We're gonna produce a search here in this main search box for Bookmobile. And so we'll get a list of results based on anything with Bookmobile that's based in the full text or the metadata. I mentioned Cortex has flexible metadata. You can build your own metadata schemas or use one of the ones that we pre-populate for you and continue to edit them to the needs of your own repository. We have here 311 results. If I take off the full text and search just on the metadata, we see that we only get 212 results. So there's a lot of results here that are being displayed because Bookmobile only uh, is found in the full text transcript. I'm gonna go ahead and apply uh, our full text again, and I'm going to browse down here to this particular news clipping. It's a newspaper clipping from 1937, and we immediately see that we have highlighting uh, here in the summary metadata, as well as in the asset. Um, so Bookmobile is being found in a few places. It's being found in the summary metadata in the title in the description. But we see here that we are finding Bookmobile in the asset. So I'm gonna go ahead and use our deep zoom to come in. I'm gonna scroll over here to our transcript tab. So we can see that Bookmobile is being found in the full text transcript. This was created using our OCR process in Cortex to automatically uh, create a transcript for this particular asset. Now we can scroll on down and see the other instances of which Bookmobile appears in the transcript. And I'm going to scroll on down to the bottom here. We can see in our search results tab that again, Bookmobile appears twice in the item metadata. Uh, Harris County Public Library has chosen to label this tab as item details. Um, and then we also see that in the image results, there's four hits for Bookmobile. So again, we can see those four hits here. Now, I do want to share that uh, Cortex provides, I mentioned, our control vocabularies and metadata. You can create control vocabularies in Cortex to create ways for people to browse through assets in your collections. So we can see here that there's these three ellipses. These are all control vocabularies, and these are also the names of the collections to which this particular asset has been assigned. We can come over here and see that the there's also three subjects, bookmobiles and the news and library on wheels. If we're interested in exploring bookmobiles more, we can click on bookmobiles and be directed to um, anything in their collections that have been tagged with that particular control vocabulary. Now we can see that there's only 186 assets and we performed that full text search earlier where we got over 300. So we are seeing the power of full text transcription and how many more uh, assets someone might be able to find uh, through that particular process. Now, I do want to point out a few other ways in which uh, Harris County Public Library is producing discovery points for bookmobiles in particular. Um, we can browse by collection and go to their collection landing page for their bookmobiles collection. We can scroll on down and see that the provided images, links uh, that go back into their assets. Um, these uh, will provide you with filtered uh, results um, from searches, um, and then as well as uh, full page carousel images. Now we can also go to digital exhibits. I mentioned exhibits a few times. Uh, Harris County Public Library is publishing over 30 digital exhibits over the course of this year. And they've produced one already on bookmobiles. So I can click here on bookmobiles and we're directed into the digital exhibit where we can go and learn more about the bookmobile program throughout Harris County Public Library. So we can browse through the individual slides. And then when we get to an image that we might wanna learn more about, you can create uh, related links, related page links to direct your users back to your collections so that they can continue browsing. Uh, your, your materials. 
Now, there is another way in which Harris County Public Library is also uh, displaying bookmobiles and talking about bookmobiles in their county library system, and that's through their centennial map. I'm going to scroll down here and we'll see that uh, we have a map with an integrated timeline. And if I scroll down to the bottom here, we have our key. So this yellowish orangish uh, circle is bookmobile stops. So we can scroll through their timeline oops, and see all the instances of bookmobiles in Harris County Public Library. We can also click on a bookmobile, possibly get a location and be redirected back into their collections. Um, so with that, I am going to um, turn it over to Katie to talk about EV transcription and HTR transcription. Thanks, Jessica. Now we'll take a look at AV assets um, and transcription in Cortex. For this example, we're going to jump over to the Bay Area TV Archive Cortex site. They're based out of San Francisco State University, and they have thousands of hours of um, TV footage shot in the Bay Area. So for an example of AV transcription, I'm going to run a search for the term Wheaties, which we know is the breakfast of champions. So I'll go ahead and run that search. Jessica pointed out before that because of the availability of the transcript, um, we're searching both transcripts as well as the metadata. Just to illustrate again how powerful those uh, transcripts are in terms of creating more accessibility and discoverability to the resources. I'll rerun my search just on the metadata, and we can see that Wheaties was not mentioned in the metadata. So we're only being pointed to these assets because of the transcripts. I'm going to go ahead and click into this first asset here. Willie Mays visits Frederick Burke School. Uh, Willie Mays, of course, the baseball great, and in this particular asset, he's actually talking to the students about eating a healthy breakfast as well as other topics. If I click over into the transcript, we can very clearly see that the term Wheaties is highlighted twice in yellow. Um, and whenever you run AV transcription in platform, um, we have a time-coded copy that's automatically generated. These time codes are hyperlinked, so if we want to go right to that section where our search term Wheaties was found, we can go ahead and do that. I'm going to mute this asset. Um, so we've gone directly to that section of the video. This is particularly helpful for very lengthy AV assets. Um, the Transcript is also helpful in that it actually provides closed captioning for these assets as well. So you, we can watch um, this video in this format. We can expand our screen slightly if we'd wish to, or we can actually go full screen for an even better viewing experience and still have the benefit of the transcript available to us. Jessica showed us a great example of digital exhibits on the Harris County um, site. So I wanted to just also mention that AV assets can also be featured in your digital exhibits that you build in Cortex. Um, and if you've run transcription on those AV assets, another benefit is that the closed captioning will follow the AV asset into your digital exhibit. Finally, we're going to actually talk about handwritten text recognition. Um, again, this is groundbreaking technology that is exclusively available to repositories here in the Cortex Digital Collection site. I'm actually starting on the uh, Cortex demo site where we have lots of different examples. I'll start on um, a page where we provide more information about handwritten text recognition, sort of our frequently asked questions section. Um, but this tool um, in general is uh, a really powerful resource. It's an algorithm that is uh, generating full transcripts of your handwritten documents. So because of that, it is enabling full text search from anywhere on the platform. So here in the masthead, or again on the home page from our main search bar is now possible. The transcript is always going to be visible alongside your asset. This is going to make your handwritten content actually much easier uh, for any visitor to read. The transcript is also uh, visible and accessible to screen readers as well. 
So this technology is trained on um, assets written um, in secretary hand as early as the 16th century up to modern writing styles. And it also supports um, most Western European um, languages that includes Dutch, English, French, German, Italian, Latin, Norwegian, Portuguese, Spanish, Swiss, and Swiss German. We're also interested in training this technology on other languages as well. So again, I'd encourage you to visit our demo site here and learn more about HTR if that's of interest. But now I'd like to actually show you this technology um, uh, in action. So I'm gonna run search for the term chapel. Again, just to illustrate how the transcripts can help with legibility. Um, as we saw with our other examples, if I toggle off um, searching the transcripts, but only search the metadata, we can see the term chapel was actually not cataloged in any of these resources. So again, enhancing discoverability of your collections with full text search is really valuable here. I'm gonna go ahead into this first example labeled secretary hand example. And as soon as I come into the asset, you can see we do have hit highlighting here in our uh, image. And then I'll come over to the transcript and you can see we have hit highlighting in the transcript as well. Um, again, this document is written in secretary hand. Um, for those who are not familiar with this writing style or who've not been trained uh, to read this writing style, this may be a document um, that would be very difficult for most people to use, including myself. Um, again, I do think the availability of the transcript directly alongside the asset really helps in terms of legibility, but also again, accessibility as this transcript tab is uh, accessible to screen readers. So in this example, uh, this is a single image asset. We can apply HDR to um, compound objects as well. So for another example, I'll just run a search for the term sheep. You can see we have uh, 37 assets in our site where that term was found. I'm gonna go ahead and click into this first example, an account of the first settlement of Nantucket. And you can see again, we do have hit highlighting in the asset as well as in the transcript. For compound objects, as Jessica pointed out before, if you run a keyword search and multiple search terms uh, appear, you're gonna have this search results tab pop up below your full metadata record, which is here. Um, and these are hyperlinks that tell you which page of the compound ob object your um, search term was found, as well as an indication of the number of instances that search term was found. And you can click and navigate to your search terms that way. Um, another way you can do that is actually using our browse images feature. So in this 10 page um, compound object, you can see um, any pages where our search term have been found um, highlighted in yellow. You could directly navigate to the pages that way. You also do have your hits turner where you can actually navigate through the pages with your search result. This is of course distinct from this page turner here which is gonna take us through all 10 pages of your asset. In looking at this transcript um, alongside the asset, you may have noticed there um, may be some errors. So HTR as well as OCR and AV transcription, any automated transcription service is not 100% accurate. However, with HTR, we've been really pleased with the accuracy rates. You're gonna be seeing accuracy rates in the 70 to as high as 97% range. Um, there are some things you can do though, if you prefer to have a higher accuracy rating. Um, I'll illustrate here that you can actually um, allow front end users to download um, the image, the image you're on as compared to the full document. They can also download a copy of the transcript as well though. And it will produce a plain text file, which you see here. You could uh, maybe start up a crowdsourcing project where you have visitors to your site manually correct the transcript here and then submit to you for consideration. That's one option. Administrators can also manually correct 
um, transcripts from the administrative side of the platform. And it's a very similar user experience as what we're seeing here. You'll see the actual image alongside the transcript so that you can very easily correct that. Those transcripts are also valuable for other purposes as well. So for digital humanists who may wanna take the transcripts and put them into open source tools um, such as Mallet to create new understandings of our collections and content, that's something that's also um, possible because of the availability of those transcripts for download. So, um, you know, we, we showed you a few examples of transcription on our partner sites. So I'd love to show you what one of our clients, McGill University, is doing with HDR. Here we are on their Cortex site. Um, they have a collection of recipes here in their site. So I'm just going to do a quick search for the term hodgepodge, looking, of course, for a type of uh, stew, if you will. So I'll run my search on that. You can see we're pointed to one asset in their collection where that search term was found. And we're immediately pointed to this, what I think is very lovely script where hodgepodge is clearly highlighted. And here's our transcript where we see that as well. We should also illustrate that you can also run um, document, uh, you can run search terms in document as well. So I'm rerunning a search for the term sheep. We have new search results. I'm going to come back to my hodgepodge recipe page. And again, you can see sheep clearly highlighted, sheep clearly highlighted. We hope this information is helpful. There are actually lots of ways you can continue learning about Cortex. So here we've um, included a link to our Cortex Collections website um, and would point you directly to our webinar page where we have recordings of previous webinars as well as um, any upcoming webinars listed. If you'd prefer a personalized demo, we'd be very happy to provide that for you as well, either Jessica or myself. If you're interested in our handwritten text recognition technology specifically, we'd love to test some of your um, assets. Um, so that can happen in one of two ways. If you'd like to send us a sample of up to 10 assets, we'd be happy to run this technology um, ourselves. If you'd prefer to take a deeper dive into Cortex, you can do that um, through a sandbox account. Um, so you'd have a period of time to really experiment not only with um, our handwritten text recognition technology, but also OCR, uh, our AV transcription service, build digital exhibits, and so much more. We are um, very excited about HGR with transcription. Um, this technology just released this year. And so in recognition and celebration of that really big accomplishment, we are offering special pricing um, for a project-based approach with Cortex. That's a two-year um, uh, offer. Um, and that pricing is available through November 15th. So if you are interested in that, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to either Jessica or myself um, and we'd be really happy to talk with you about the platform, about your resources and needs, and also um, provide any pricing for you. So thank you again for uh, attending uh, this session. And again, we are answering questions via live chat. So please do submit your questions and we'll be happy to connect with you. Thank you.